want to talk about navigation using waypoints. Uh, before you start doing this, you want to check that your GPS and your chart are working off the same datum. Most charts now will be on WGS84, which is World Geodetic System 84. And just check that your GPS is set to the same datum, because if they're on different datums, um, it will navigate you to um, the wrong place. It will be slightly out. So it's important that your datum on the chart and your datum on the GPS will be the same. When we plot a waypoint on the chart, it will look like this, which is a cross with a square around it. So anybody looking at that chart will know that that is a uh, waypoint position. Waypoint navigation is straight lines between point to point. It's a bit like a dot to dot on the chart. So you input the waypoints and you're going from waypoint to waypoint using your uh, GPS. So they're stored uh, by latitude, longitude of the member of the GPS. Um, you can either put it in manually or more commonly now on a chart plotter, you will um, input it with your finger on the screen. And we'll talk about that on the Navionics. Um, waypoints can be measured from the chart, but double check the figures. Um, if you put the wrong latitude, longitude is the commonest error. If you're using um, Navionics and you put uh, it across the line is also a common error or across a wreck or a rock because you haven't zoomed in to have a look at it is a common error. And we'll look at that under the Navionics waypoint um, routing tutorial. So waypoints um, are given in almanacs, directories and magazines. Um, what I suggest you don't do quite categorically is not go through your magazine and input a waypoint from that magazine or almanac because if everybody does that and the visibility comes down, we'd all be going to the same place. So that would be a waypoint assisted collision because we'll be going to the same place in restricted visibility. So make up your own positions for your waypoints. And when you put your waypoints on, um, plot them on the chart. A direct route between um, the two here takes us over the headland. So if we do this, it will take us aground. Look carefully, zoom in on the chart and make sure we're not going over um, any points of danger or individual rocks um, or anything that's going to be a problem between the waypoints. So you do, if you're using um, electronic charts, you do need to zoom in along your waypoint. Possible, select waypoints that can be easily checked by other methods, either visual fixes, soundings or depths, radar, transits, next to a buoy, anything like that. So we can double check that that waypoint is in that place when we get there. Don't use charted objects um, as waypoints. If you're going to use a buoy, put it next to the buoy because the visibility comes down and you're going straight in your waypoint with the GPS. There is a chance of it popping out the fog and you hitting it. Um, if you're going for a on the right hand picture there is a fairway or safe water mark. If you pop that in as a waypoint and everybody does that and the reduced visibility, everybody will converge on the same boy. So offset it to one side so we don't hit it. Offset it on a fair fairway boy so we don't all converge in the same place in uh, restricted visibility. Name your waypoints. Um, here, waypoint one, waypoint two, waypoint three. Measure the distance and bearing between the waypoints and draw it on the chart and note them on the chart so you can check them on the passage. Use the trip log, which is the distance that you've gone. We've talked about log, um, distance you've gone to monitor your distance. Bear in mind, it won't be exact because there'll be an effect of the wind blowing the boat sideways, which is leeway and tide. So tidal um, set and drift. Um, your choice, you could convert it on the chart to compass. So if you're going from waypoint one to waypoint two, as we get to waypoint two, you sell the helmsperson. person, um, when I ask you in a minute, please steer um, 100 and we go on that for 3.8 miles and they can do that straight onto the compass. But make it obvious um, on your passage plan or chart that that's what you're doing, uh, that it's in compass. Uh, check your position says periodically all the time by another method other than GPS. So you have the last known position um, in the event of a GPS failure or receiver failure. If you're using... Um, Navionics, make sure you've downloaded the charts into your device beforehand. And we'll talk about that on the City Sailing Navionics um, tutorial. So keep an eye out where you are. Have a visual chart or map in your head where you are at all times. As I say, when I do the Yachtmaster exams, um, say to the candidate, please put your finger on the chart where you think you are. So anytime you should be able to put your finger on the chart where you are. And my next question will always be, that's great, that's where you are. Where's your nearest danger? So you should know where you are 
and where your nearest danger is and checking that by all available means um, at all times as well as the uh, the route that you're plotting on your, your waypoints. So if you look at your ROA chart 3, top left hand corner, we start in Stubbington Bay with the anchor symbol is and we're going into the south channel with the leading lines into Victoria. So waypoint navigation is navigating with straight lines, a bit like as I said before, dot to dot. So <clears throat> you can't go straight as it would cross the land. So here we go, it's dub into Victoria, across the land, can't do that. So we need to plan our route, check the route for obstacles, dangers, shoals, rocks, islands, etc. Besides looking at the chart, check in the almanac and pilots for navigation warnings <clears throat> and check for dangers on route. Here we've highlighted a few dangers. So the first one is the Superboy with the restricted area. So if you look around the uh, outside, you can see the restricted area and we need to miss this. <clears throat> Overfalls, tides, rips and tidal races. Well, that's off um, West Point. So if we look at West Point, we can see the tidal races. So we need to go around the outside of that. And then as we get into Victoria, we can see the leading line of the two transits of the lights coming in. Um, it says on the chart. So we need to pop away point at the beginning of that so we know that we're at that point going in. So plan your route, plot a series of waypoints to avoid the obstacles and dangers, check quarter of a mile either side of your course to allow for course errors, bad steering, and errors caused by the wind and tide. So here we go, we've got the waypoints, and we've put in the safety of quarter of a mile either side. So the first one we've got, we avoid the, uh, the area of the buoy, restricted area around the buoy. Second one avoids the rough water off West Point, the overfalls off West Point. And the next one takes us into the start of the transit of Victoria, and it gives us one in the harbour of Victoria. And there it is, published on the, uh, plotted on the chart. So name the waypoints, work out that as your longitude, pop them in the GPS, or you can just drag and drop and pop them on your plotter. So there you go, waypoint 1, waypoint 2, waypoint 3, waypoint 4. So measure the distance and bearings between the waypoints, note them on the chart so you can check them against the range of bearing on the GPS. Use the trip or distance log, and we've talked about that in one of our tutorials, to monitor the distance as you go between the waypoints. So here we go with the waypoints um, on your chart, and you have the bearing and the range between the waypoints. So you know as you're going from waypoint 1 to waypoint 2, the range is 6.2 miles and the bearing is 300 degrees. Um, let's work through a question. So, using chart, um, are we training chart 4F, which is the chart lit to hair sound, plan a passage from Dumbarton, starting at the starboard, green boy, flashing green every three seconds, at the start of the Rue Channel, to the anchorage at Indy Harbour on the island of Sinka. Plot the waypoints you'd use on the chart. So let's have a look at this chart. There we go. So, bottom left-hand corner is our start, and the top right there, the anchorage at Indy Harbour, is our finish. Obviously we can't go between one to the other because it will take us over the island. There we go, we can't do that. Let's put the wheels down on the boat. Um, we have to work out a waypoint um, to get um, from the start to the finish. So plan your route. Check the routes for obstacles, dangers, shoals, rocks and islands. Besides looking at the chart, check the Ormanac and pilots for navigational warnings as well. So there we go, On the uh, as we depart, it says in the Ormanac, avoid the main channel. Large vessels will use this channel to get to and from the terminal north of Dumbarton. The pilot advises small craft to keep to the red light sector, which just keeps us out of the channel. Um, on the next one there of Hucklehead, it said this is a warning for large vessels, so small vessels should keep clear. The pilot warns of rough water at spring tides. And the top right there, it says area no go zone. Vessels under 20 metres are prohibited from entering this zone. So we've checked it, we know where the dangers are, we know the areas we can't go, and now we can start plotting our waypoints for the routes. So there we go. So the first two, the first two waypoints plotted um, to avoid the channel. The next waypoint placed outside the channel and far enough east to clear the rough water. Um, the next one up, this waypoint is placed to ensure that you don't drift into the restricted area, so it keeps you out the bottom left-hand corner of the restricted area. Then the next one's a turning point, and then it takes you into the, uh, the destination. So there it is, waypoint navigation, easy to do. Make sure that you keep an alternative source of positioning. Thank you for listening. Please like and subscribe to Paul City Sailing.